Thank you for joining us on our webinar on training for the Auto 1000 in the Mini. Today we're going to be going over the uses and applications of those two instruments. Um, ben is our tech support specialist. He'll be presenting today. We're going to keep everybody on mute for the duration of the presentation. There will be time at the end for questions. So if you do have questions, just put them into the chat box and we can address those after uh, the presentation is done. So with that, I will give it over to Ben. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our second technical training webinar. As Sarah mentioned, uh, we will be doing uh, covering the Solometer Mini and Auto 1000 today. Uh, as she mentioned, my name is Ben Paradis. I work here as the technical support specialist. So without further ado, we can get started. So the training topics today, uh, first we're going to go over a brief introduction to the Solometer Mini and Auto 1000 cell counting systems. Uh, what are they? What types of cells are they used for? Next, we're going to get familiar with our software. Uh, this will be done in two parts. First, we're going to look at our home screen. And then next, we're going to go over how to perform a total cell concentration, as well as a tripan blue viability assay uh, with some live cell samples that we have here. And then lastly, we're going to go over the data management features available to you um, within the software. All right, so first, the brief introduction to our Mini and Auto 1000. So the Solometer Mini, it uses a single bright field channel. It's suitable for cell lines and primary culture cell concentrations and viability analysis. Viability analysis is done using Tripan Blue. It also gives you cell size analysis for live and dead cell populations. And I highlighted this in red because this is the main difference between the Mini and Auto 1000. The Solometer Mini requires an external computer, uh, external PC, for operation. So our Auto 1000, the same single bright field channel, suitable for cell line and primary cultured cell concentration viability analysis. The viability analysis is done using Tripan Blue, and then the cell size analysis is also performed. And this is a standalone touchscreen instrument there's no external computer required. So the com computer is built in. It's standalone and it, can, it uh, takes up very small uh, bench top space. So just to quickly look at some of the different cell types uh, that we support. Uh, first is an example of a uh, slightly heterogeneous popula population. This is a cell line. You see that there's some irregular shaped cells. There's some cells in clusters. And then there's some really small debris that's excluded. Okay, so that's just one example. Another example. Here we have uh, another regular shape skin cancer cell line, SKMEL-2. Uh, you can see that not all the cells are perfectly round. However, we're still able to count those. A A549 cancer cell, clumpy cell line, you can see that, that we can decluster those cells very well. Um, and then just to go over it again, so we, we can count uh, the Auto 1000 and Mini are for mammalian immortalized cell lines, cultured primary cells, as many of you probably are familiar with the NCI 60 cancer cell lines, there's quite a few cancer cell lines there. Um, so clean samples, free of debris. <laughs> so next, we want to get familiar with our software. First, we're going to cover the, uh, the home screen. Okay, so this is what you see when you start the software. Um, this is our home screen. This is where we select our assay. So you can see up top our current assay, cell line viability track in blue. It is outlined in red. That way you know it's selected. And then numbers two and three, uh, we have our sample ID and dilution factor. Uh, those I'll go into a little bit more detail when we go over the data management features. Okay, but the users, uh, you guys can enter in a sample ID, a custom sample ID, or a uh, custom dilution factor based on the final dilution performed on your cells. And then we have number four, our assays available for selection. There's only two here, but you can see there's uh, four other spaces, and there's many, many uh, other spaces you can fill with customized assays and cell types, um, but that I'll touch on in a little bit. Number five, once we select our assay and we're ready to perform a cell count, we can click preview. This will give us a live image feed of our cells on the counting chamber where we can focus and then count. Number six, if your mini, uh, if you have saved images on your mini computer or if you have a USB or network connection on your Auto 1000, we can, pre we can load previously saved images 
and reanalyze those uh, for uh, the cell concentration, size analysis, and viability. Settings takes us to our counting options, so users can adjust the speed of counting or adjust the data or image saving. And then lastly, we have our help button. Uh, this is what users can select to uh, access our electronic copy of the manual, or if your Auto 1000 or Mini has network access or internet access, you can um, find our online help uh, tutorials, FAQs, videos, and, uh, and a support web page. So now we're going to go into our total cell concentration assay. Okay, so I'm just going to switch over to uh, our um, mini software. So let me just get that. Okay. So here, uh, we'll go back to our home screen, okay? And this is a lot of demo. So we have a slide here with jerkette cells on it, an immortalized cell line. So I've already put it with the cell sample, the 20 microliters onto the slide. So in the slide in the instrument. So I'm going to select our total cell concentration. These are not stained with track and blue. Okay? I'm going to enter in our sample ID. So we'll do jerkette sample one. And click save. Okay, we have a dilution factor of one because there were no dilutions done for this sample. And I'm going to hit preview. All right, so this is our uh, Jaquette cell sample. I'm just going to zoom out so you can take a look at our entire image. Okay, and this is image A. Okay, you see down here current image. We can select between four images, A, B, C, and D. All right, we'll just go back to image A. Okay, over here on the left, you see the cells are already in focus. Um, let me just zoom in so you can get a little better look at it. Okay, you see our cells are already in focus. We have a nice dark membrane, bright cell center. Uh, you do not need to focus in between samples. Uh, however, you may notice um, if you're counting a different cell type, there may be a slightly better focal position, and users can adjust that with these two focus buttons over here. So we have our cross focus. If I click that, you can see that it makes uh, a slight change. And then an even finer change is our fine focus. Um, it's difficult to see, but it, it makes the fine-tune adjustments to get that perfect focal position for your count. So our cells are in uh, focus. Now we can count. So right now the, the instrument, it's done in two parts. It's acquiring the images, so it's taking our bright fields A, B, C, and D. All right, and our count is finished. You see it's very quick. So here's our results page. We have a total cell count of 483 cells, a concentration of 1.4 million cells per mil with an average diameter of 12.4 microns. So what can we do from here? We have this details button at the bottom left. Okay, this brings up our previously counted images, the images we just counted. You can see here A through D. Okay, one benefit of being imaging based is we can tell the software to show us what was counted. So you see by clicking this view counted image, okay, we can see all the cells that were counted and they're highlighted in green. Okay. Also, we can look at our size histogram. So when the salometer performs the count, it also does a, uh, does a size analysis. And uh, we see here that the average size is around 12.4, uh, 12.7 micron. Okay, and here's just a list of all 461 cells that it counted. So I'm going to go back to our results. Okay, and you see over here in the bottom right, next sample, this is when uh, once we finished our count, we have our data recorded, we can begin our next sample. So I'm going to switch back to our PowerPoint. All right, so next we'll do our Tritan Blue Viability Assay. Before we do that, I just wanted to review the protocol with everyone. Um, so Tritan Blue Viability Analysis is for cell lines or primary cultured cells, clean samples. Um, we, uh, you see there we recommend diluting a small volume of Tritan Blue, one to one with PBS. So most stock concentrations are at 0.4% Tritan Blue. Uh, we recommend a working concentration of 0.2%. So that means when you mix with your cells, one-to-one, -one, we're starting with 0.2%. Uh, 
Okay, and if your tritan blue is older, uh, we recommend filtering it. There may be some crystallized tritan blue uh, that can get into the uh, into the slide. Um, once we're ready, we mix one to one with cell samples, so 20 microliters to 20 microliters, and uh, we mix that together in a tiny uh, micro centrifuge tube and load onto our counting chamber to count. So now I'm just going to switch back. Um, let's see. We'll switch back to the software. And on this next slide, we have TC3 prostate cancer cells uh, stained with tritan blue. So I'm just putting the slide in the instrument. OK, I'm going to go back to our home screen by clicking assays and settings. All right, and you see here that our current assay selected is uh, cell line total cell concentration. We want the viability tritan blue assay. So I'm going to click on that. Again, it's outlined in red. Okay. I'm going to adjust our sample ID to say PC3 tripan blue dash one. We'll save that. And then you'll notice our dilution factor, okay, is a default of two. That's because we did a one-to-one -one dilution with tripan blue in cell samples. So we'll leave that. Okay. We're ready to count. I'm going to click preview. All right, and you can see, again, going back to focus, um, we don't need to change the focus. Uh, it stays in the correct focal position for these cells. It's a different sample. First, we counted your cat. These are PC3. OK, but again, if you need to change the focus, you can use the coarse and fine focus adjustment okay, to get the best focus for your image. So once we're ready to count, we're going to click Count. It's going to analyze A through B and give us our results. All right, and you'll see that this looks a little bit different uh, compared to the uh, total cell concentration assay. We have total live and dead cell count, concentration, and average diameter. Okay, and our viability is reported at about 96, 97%. Uh, okay, so let's go back. We can look at our details. All right, and let's zoom in. I want to look at this cell right here. This looks like to be a dead cell. Okay, so you can see here a really nice. Uh, example of declustering. So we have four cells, uh, I'm sorry, five cells here. Okay, in the software, and these are the default parameters, by the way. These are not any customized parameters. Uh, you can see here that it accurately declusters our clumps and also identifies our dead cells. So our live cells here are outlined in green, and our dead cells will be outlined in red. Okay, and our size histogram is going to look a little bit different. We have our uh, we have two bars now, two populations, our, our live cells in green and our dead cells in red. All right. So that's our tritan blue assay. So let's go over some of the data saving options we have available on our uh, or our data management options we have available on our auto. Uh, 1,000 and mini. So I went over the sample ID and dilution factor. The sample ID, uh, it allows for uh, users to customize the sample identification. This increases the organization of saved data and images. So when you go back and look at your USB drive or your network drive where all your data and images are saved, it allows you to easily recall uh, what cell sample you may have counted. Uh, you can enter in a dilution factor. Um, you can enter in you know, custom uh, two.